what inspired you to write such a great and wonderful book as this? Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll, ta I'll take the compliment and then I'll answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I think anyone could have done it. Uh, all they had to do was to, to visit a camp for these kids and to watch them and to listen to them and to let some of that optimism and hope rub off. You couldn't miss with it. You just couldn't miss. What emotions went through your, you know, your mind when seeing this? Oh, t terrible, terrible emotions. Uh, I started off with, uh, with a big dose of, of pity, and that was getting in my way. I mean, it was just a lot of excess baggage, and I thought, I've got to get rid of this. I mean, this is terrible. I was crying a lot. Uh, when I got a lot of responses back from the kids, and I read through all of these letters and these diaries from these mothers and, and grandparents, I mean, it just devastated me. And I thought, I'm, I'm being really ineffective here. I mean, I've, I've really got to get a handle on this and find out where I'm going. Once I got rid of all that stuff and I joined the kids in their fight, it, it, was, it was easy. It was very easy. And I like the interviews. You know, I haven't done that for a long time. I used to do that when I worked for a paper. But I, I found myself traveling around the country, and I, I went to Boston to interview um, young Ted Kennedy. And I didn't interview him because he was a celebrity. I mean, it's not a celebrity book. Uh, he really had something to say. He's, he's a survivor. He was diagnosed at 10. He had 15% chance of making it, and he's 26 years old. <laughs> what do you, in writing the book, how long did it take you? took me two years, and people say, you know, <laughs> boy, you write slow. No, it, it's just that kids with cancer, they don't have a network. They don't all hang out at the same place. Uh, they rarely see one another. Uh, maybe passing in the hospital or a doctor's office or something like that. But there isn't um, a central place where you can tap and get all of this information. So I really had to work through the camps. I had to visit a lot of them, and then I had to sort of pick and choose from the mail. And I think this is incredible. We tend to think that cancer is, is localized. We never think of it outside of the United States. And yet I got responses from kids from France, Canada, Great Britain, Australia, New Zealand. I uh, probably could have gotten more if I had sought that sort of thing, but this was just from word of mouth and someone telling someone else. What inspired uh, you know, when writing this book, what did you hope for it to be? What did you hope for it to do? What was the purpose? Okay, what I really wanted to do, well, I, I started out with some great idea that I would bring greater understanding of these kids to people. I mean, you know, we were going to help them, and it turned out just the opposite. It turned out to be a book where I think we can all benefit from it. Um, you know, the, the old thing, little children will lead us, uh, it couldn't be more true than this book because that's exactly what they're doing. They have something to tell us. They can still teach us. And I think sometimes we don't listen to our kids and we don't observe them. The innocence that they have, that they bring to a situation, even if it's a life-threatening disease, I think we could learn a lot from it because they live one single day at a time and that's all and no more. They don't have great expectations. They don't waste all their energy uh, ranting and raving at why me and why did this happen and uh, is this going to last forever. They don't think about that. They, they just go on and say, hey, today I've got and that's going to be it. Let me ask you another, you know, this, this question might sound a little harsh and, and I hate it to be that way, but let's say, heaven forbid, you had cancer. Mm -hmm. Would you say that now because you've met those children that you've learned to go on? Okay. I've learned a lot, you bet. You bet. I, th I think even in your daily life, you don't have to have a disease to react like that. I, th I think it, it helps you in your, in your daily life. Um, I, I, my daughter actually did, I, I didn't mention her in the book, but my daughter did have a, a brush with cancer when she was uh, 20 years old. Um, she had cancer of the thyroid. And I don't pretend to have, uh, the reason why I didn't mention it, I didn't go through anything that the people in this book went through, and not, e not even close. She had surgery and it was removed and that was it. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, even for, you know, those few days, I mean, I, I understand, I, I, I have empathy for these people. I know how it can just rip you apart. And how they adjusted to it, I was impressed by it. What would you tell someone, uh, what would you tell someone about the book to make them read it? What two things could you tell them? Okay. I think, I think this book is for a very large spectrum, from children who need to know how to handle their life, to elderly who say there's nothing good left in the world, everyone's going to hell in a bushel basket, to people who like to read adventure, to people who want to read of uh, battles and bravery. 
uh, right on down the line. Uh, it, it's, it's a book that I think will, will change your life. I know I'm being dramatic, but I, th I think it's true. It's, it's going to change the way you think about your, your, your daily existence. What would you write next if you could write something or will write something? You mean in, in the same... In, in the same... Atmosphere. In the same vein? What, Gosh, what I hadn't like thought about that. In fact, they, they've... Um, <laughs> my next book is going to be 100% humor because I figure, you know, if, if, if these kids can, can have humor in a situation like this, I mean, anything else I write is going to be a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to come real easy. <laughs> in writing this book... What, was anybody positive or negative about it other than you? Were, was there anybody saying, don't write this, it's such oh, yeah. a sore subject? Yeah. Happily, uh, I have an editor uh, and a publisher at Harper and Row who uh, believed in it from the word go. They, di they didn't give me any static at all. Uh, when they heard that I was writing a, a book on cancer, they said, great, great. Bring, bring some optimism and hope to it. I mean, make it a positive book. You can do it. And every once in a while, I would, I would send it, every once in a while, every other day, I'd send in a chapter, and I would get this polite phone call saying, bring it up, bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of humor in this that, that the kids have, have discovered. Has there been anybody who's read it who's given you any comments, and what would those be? I'm sorry, if what? Uh, the people who've read the book so far, you know, the, the few people. Well, the, the only ones that I, that I have talked to, I mean, it's, it's just out. The only ones I've talked to have been some of the kids that I've sent it to. And their reaction was absolute shock. They had no idea that there were other kids out there surviving. They thought they were the only ones, and they were sort of scared, you know, that might not last. And they read stories and hear of kids who've had cancer a couple of times. There's one girl in there who, who is 20 years old, and she's been through two bouts with cancer, a stroke, an operation on her knee. And I saw her last summer at camp, and she's, she's still swinging. <laughs> After writing this whole book and doing what you've done, wh what's the feelings that go through your mind? Well, um, if, if, if you can indulge me, I'm, I'm sort of proud of it. I really am. Um, I don't know if people remember me for, for anything, you know, a little bit of nonsense, um, a joke that they maybe can't remember, but I think they're going to remember this book for a long time. So maybe I've, I've, I have a legacy here of something that... Um, that will stay on the bookcase a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you for the wonderful interview. If I could borrow your time for one moment, could you possibly do a couple of promos? I don't will know. Just, will you promote your book uh, being on the show? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I have to check with the powers behind these cameras. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they should have a problem with that. Okay. <laughs> First promo I'd like you to do is say, um, say your name and say, Hi, I'm watching me when I discuss my book with Barry Blake on Inside Entertainment. What, 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 what is, what oh, is I just want you to say, hi, I'm Irma Bombeck. Yeah. Join me when I discuss I Want to Grow Here, I Want to Grow Up, I Want to, you know, the, the name of the title, uh -huh. uh, Inside Entertainment with Barry Blake. Inside Entertainment with Barry Blake. Right. At your leisure. Okay. Do you want me... Oh, okay. All right. Do we have a moment? Oh, Thank you. With, I'm, I'm sorry, with Barry Blake on, on Inside... Right, Inside Entertainment, just promoting... Inside Entertainment, right. okay. Anytime? Anytime. Hi, this is Irma Bombeck. I've just written a book called I Want to Grow Hair, I Want to Grow Up, I Want to Go to Boise. Please join me when I discuss this book with Barry Blake on Inside Entertainment. Perfect. Last one of the day. This is real simple. If you could just say, whenever I want to know what's going on in the world of entertainment, I turn on Barry Blake. All right. At your leisure. At my name? Yeah. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> Hi, this is Irma Bombeck. Whenever I want to know what's going on about inside entertainment, I tune in to Barry Blake. Perfect. <laughs> I appreciate the time with you spent. You're I welcome. The book goes over wonderfully. Thank you. Thanks, Irma. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.